Welcome to another one of Arthur's Engage Reviews. Um, now, as you may or may not know, we normally start with a picture of the subject or something that we're going to review. Um, this time, we're going to start off with the packaging. It's massive. That box contains the Graham Farish Landship Train Pack which is a 4F uh, model with three bogey bolsters uh, and the three Mark I uh, World War I tank under tarpaulings as the load. Um, now I have just to give you some idea of the scale of what's inside. Um, here's a 4F even the right way up And I have cheated slightly because not only did I order the train pack but I also ordered a brake van kit to go with it. So also inside is something of that size. So this is review number 10. Let's open the box and see how we get on. Right well we're now um, through the outer packaging and down to the model and its packaging itself and as you can see it's a bit smaller but I would say not very much. Here's our little brake van, here's our 4F, here's our box and we can extract the brake van. Now whatever your thoughts are, are on the environment and packaging and all the rest of it, um, one has to say at first impressions of looking at this box is how beautiful it's been presented. The box itself by the way is quite stout, made of good quality cardboard I would say and with a nice picture on the front and very well presented. So let's see what's inside. So, the box opens to reveal yet another First World War scene. Here we have our 4F, number 3848. Um, she's in uh, Midland Railways Black with a number on the tender, but we'll have a closer look at that. We have our three bogey bolster wagons in olive green and our three Mark 1 tank loads under their tarpaulins. So, okay. remove that. We actually finally get down to the models themselves. Now, this being a train pack, of course, and by the way, I should mention this is one piece of uh, pre stout, pre carved polystyrene. Uh, this being a train pack, of course, the um, items themselves don't come in individual Graham Farish boxes like this engine here, but in the internal plane blister pack. Take them out. There we go. So to complete the um, comments on the packaging, as previously stated, the uh, engine comes in this plain pack. Uh, it's the typical Farish cocoon or Batman cocoon inside this quite stout plastic box which I had some difficulty in extracting the mechanism from and I would say that over time that's not long for the world. Uh, coming down to the bogey bolsters again 
they come in a similar packaging um, because it's bigger it seems easier to get into and opened up a lot easier perhaps it's made of the same material as the engine one but it does seem a lot easier to use and then finally we have the Mark 1 under its tarpaulins. Now, as you can see here, they are wedged into the polystyrene with tissue paper. And I found them with my Western fingers very difficult to extract without ripping bits of the polystyrene coating away. I did try to put a screwdriver underneath and that didn't work either. Um, so it took quite a while to actually extract these um, items from the packaging without damaging anything or indeed scratching the models themselves. So, um, I'm sure if you have uh, Chinese fingers it's probably a lot easier. Now then, coming down to the engine itself. Apart from the different number and the number being carried of course on the tender, the engine having and you can see that the Midland Railway crash initially I cannot find any difference apart from the paint job uh, between the 4F in this pack and the regular 4F as bought on its own. Now these were already been uh, reviewed this in review at number six so if you want to know how uh, these engines run and what they look like review number six is the one for you he said and of advert um, let's now go on to the bogey bolster which hasn't been reviewed and of course the mock-up of the tank itself you may wonder by the way why I'm attaching uh, the bogey bolster and the load to my old 4F, older 4F, rather than the brand new model. And the reason is because uh, this one has yet to be run in, and I don't want to run it in um, behind too much of a load because uh, it's quite heavy actually. Um, so the running part of this review will actually be done using an engine that we already know about. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at our bogey bolster. Well, now the bogey bolsters in themselves are absolutely lovely models. Superbly uh, crisp moulding on them and they are a complete bogey bolster model in its own right. Um, you can put stanchions in there if you want. You will notice on the top the four little uh, holes for fixing down the load uh, and that is that is needed to keep the uh, mock tanks um, safely on the top because as previously went, they're quite heavy in fact they weigh in at 28 grams each so making this load 84 grams in total which is probably a lot more than uh, some of the model locomotives. Anyway, I um, I predict that these will be much sought after in their own right. Um, the tanks, of course, are one piece moulding, uh, and as previously stated, 28 grams. Not much really more to say about that, except to uh, reiterate that they're, they're quite a nice likeness. Um, so all we need now for our train it's a guard van. So now here's the um, Pico brake run kit 
for our tank train and um, it's a standard Pico brake van which just to annoy all you purists out there I'm going to finish in olive drab and uh, it will have WD on the sides I don't know if a brake van ever ran like that but on my railway one certainly is so uh, the WD uh, decals are um, coming from Robbie's rolling stock and it's just to pick one of his wagon kits um, pay for the slides only and uh, on their way so that, that, that's a fairly easy way of uh, getting something on the side of our brake van um, I'm just going to zoom in on this and say I'm finishing this off or colouring the brake van in olive drab um, now in order to do this the nearest colour I could get was bullied olive green and so here's my pot of umbral acrylic bullied olive green um, you may have heard one or two things about umbral and um, possibly some negative comments well from my experience and it is only an opinion folks um, that pot of olive drab or bullet olive green as it is um, that's the second coat on that brake van um, using a little bit left over on the roof just to dirty things up um, I'm not impressed I have used the Vallejo uh, acrylics to um, colour other models which you'll see um, and have been very impressed with those uh, but I have to say unfortunately Mr Humbrell on this occasion um, you're coming second best fortunately for me there is a fallback position uh, while going through some old stock as us old fellas do what did he come across but Humbrell art enamel looks like it's only been opened once and shaking the tin there's certainly some uh, usable paint in in there and it is can you see that number 155 matte olive drab this tin I trust anyway on with the work So here we have our completed military train with its Pico uh, guards van made up as a small one uh, WD uh, variety having had yet another coat of paint. Um, to this I've added a couple of the uh, Pico wagon kits made up from the excellent Robbie's rolling stock um, to uh, add to the train. This is very much a mark one rule one version uh, fair set for a military train and could be used really in most eras up to almost the 1960s I suppose I mean just change the load uh, remembering that tanks of course are very heavy items in their own right so perhaps the um, if you were looking at the more modern uh, vehicles and light tanks um, heavy lorries that sort of thing would uh, make for quite a, a good load. Um, the story of the World War One tank train, by the way, you'll 
possibly be saying, why hasn't he mentioned anything yet? Well, that's because it's on the back of the box. Very nicely done. Um, my own personal preference was um, for the navy uh, wagons from Robbie's Rolling Stock, and that is because if you look at the um, story on the, the back of our pack, you will, you will note that the Royal Navy was in fact responsible for the passage to France of the original tanks in World War One. Anyway, uh, in summary, uh, what do we think of this? I'm not going to give, I'm not going to give a marking because there are more than one items. But this is a review, so what do we think? Well, we think it's very well produced. Uh, you may or may loathe, you may like, you may loathe the packaging. Uh, it will certainly. I think appeal to modelers and war gamers um, and being the basis of the military train uh, I think it's a, a very good idea and of course very timely because of the 100th anniversary of World War I. Um, very good value for money in my opinion. Um, you get the whole lot almost for the cost of the locomotive on its own and as previously mentioned I'm a big fan of these three bogey bolsters um, I think they're possibly the star of this set um, and in fact it's made me think that train packs which I wouldn't normally consider uh, in themselves train packs can be very good value for start of a complete train of something so there uh, to finish really is a train of thought for you I uh, hope you found this useful if you've got one for Christmas well congratulations so have I <laughs>